I am Beard Mobox, and I've made two videos about Moritz Böhringer before he got drafted, and as I had no clue where he might end up, I just threw him on the Patriots because they had some German players already. I even played his rookie season with him, but once again it was on the wrong team. Annoyingly, there were plenty of reasons to put him on the Vikings anyway, and I wish I had done now because then I'd look smart. Well, maybe not, but you get my point. Anyway, the idea of this video is to simulate the rookie seasons of six players from this year's draft. Of course, Mobo is one of them, but the other five are Jared Goff of the Rams, Carson Wentz of the Eagles, Corey Coleman of the Browns, and Jalen Ramsey and Miles Jack, both of the Jaguars. Now, the way I went about creating these players with realistic stats is that I went onto their draft profiles, looked at their pro comparisons, and then took the stats of those players earlier in their careers, and I'll go into more detail on a player per player basis, but these stats should be quite accurate, and if anything, they're a little low. I also played with some teams' rosters because of this, just to make sure they get adequate playing time, just like they will this season. So what I'll do is quickly discuss the creation of every player, and then take a look at the simulated season results. So Jared Goff was pretty easy, his pro comparison was Matt Ryan, so I used Ryan's rookie ultimate team card from Madden 25 and gave Goff those stats. 80 is quite likely close to what he'll be rated in Madden 17 anyway. Carson Wentz's comparison was Blake Bortles, whose rookie stats were easy to use, and once again 78 is close to what he'll likely be rated, but anything between 74 and 78 I think would be fair, and obviously for the sake of the simulation, also pretty accurate that he's lower rated than Sam Bradford, who they're saying at the moment they want to start ahead of him anyway. Corey Coleman I think is probably underrated. His comparison was John Brown, and I felt John Brown's current stats were a bit too high and his rookie ones were offensively low, so I went for an average between the two, whereas Coleman will likely have very similar stats in Madden 17 to what Brown has now in Madden 16. I left Gordon on the team because I figured Corey Coleman would probably have similar production whether he's on the other side of the field of Gordon and has the easier coverage, or whether he has the higher targets because Gordon's not playing. Obviously that probably won't work out like that in this simulation, but it should do in real life. So I went over how I worked out Mobo's physical stats in the first video I did on him, and for the rest of the stats I used his pro comparison Jeff Janis, so catching, route running, and all the like are from him. Miles Jack's comparison was Navarro Bowman, and the earliest Madden I had to hand was Madden 12, so his stats are based on Bowman's second year stats, but those are close to his rookie ones anyway, it's the same overall, and I feel like Jack will be rated higher in Madden 17 anyway. Don't be surprised if he's one of the few guys rated over 80. Finally we have Jalen Ramsey, and his numbers are based on Sean Smith. I used Smith's third year numbers, and once again I think Ramsey will be rated higher higher on Madden 17. Marcus Peters' end of the year season overall was 77, and I think Ramsey will rate higher than that. To be fair, I think they'll rate Peters higher than that too, but I won't be surprised if the Jaguars get two 80 rated rookies on their team this year. Alright, so here we are at the end of the season. A quick tiny note, can we just, in Madden 17, can it be changed again so I can actually see who's in the Super Bowl without having to be in the Super Bowl? That's one of the stupidest things on this game, you don't see who's in the games without looking, and you can't even look at the Pro Bowl squads anymore. Anyway, that's irrelevant, let's go take a look at the stats of these players. We start with Jared Goff at quarterback for the Rams, of course, let's take a look at his season stats. 84 is 4 higher than his 80 overall than we started with, 3,500 yards, 86.2 rating, 26 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, always high interceptions for rookies, but that's a good number of touchdowns thrown. That's not bad at all, let's take a look at his rushing stats and what not. Rushing 141 yards for 84 carries, he is based off of Matt Ryan so therefore his speed and stuff is a little slower but those aren't bad stats at all. Three and a half thousand yards in his rookie year, that's pretty good, let's see how many games he played. The full 16, not bad at all. Now onto the Eagles where Carson Wentz is an 81 overall, he was a 78 overall when we started this, so Carson Wentz played 13 games. 80 rating, not bad, 2,100 yards, that isn't too bad either, 11 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, not bad at all really, and then rushing 313 yards for 101, he's got a lot better rushing statistics than Jared Goff has in terms of his overalls and stuff as well, so good years for both the quarterback students, you can't be too disappointed with either of these. So Corey Coleman here... 70 overall that is too lower than he was when we started this but his stats have gone it says there's overall 73 so i don't know what's going on i think that was boosted by confidence 
Those aren't bad numbers. 56 receptions, 593 yards, 6 touchdowns, 268 of those yards are run after the catch. That's not bad at all, especially this is obviously based off of being on the team the same time as Josh Gordon, so you can't go against those at all. 16 games played, those aren't bad stats at all. I feel like if Josh Gordon doesn't play his stats, probably he'll go over a thousand yards in all likelihood. If Josh Gordon does play, he'll still get close to a thousand yards, so not what I'd expect from him, but not bad numbers either. So we move on to the, our other wide receiver at the Vikings, Mobo down here, also dropped an overall so didn't do too much either by the looks of it. Let's take a look at his stat and absolutely nothing for Mobo. That's no receptions, no yards, nothing in the kick return, nothing in the punt return, but managed to play 16 games, 81 downs. So nothing happening for him either. And to be fair, that might be an accurate description of what will happen with him next year. He is, of course, a long-term project. Then we move over to right outside linebacker, Miles Jack with the Jaguars. And I think that's a higher overall. I think, wasn't he 74 overall? 73? So he's definitely done something. Let's take a look at the stats. And nothing crazy here from Miles Jack. A total of 31 tackles, which isn't too bad. But it's also nothing crazy. Let's go all the way down here and see if anything happened here. Seven catches allowed, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery. And that's pretty much it for his stats, so nothing crazy there either. Then we move on to the cornerback position on the same team, and Jalen Ramsey took a huge leap to 80 overall, became the team's number one corner. I'm expecting a lot from him. And there's the big numbers, 88 tackles, a sack, two interceptions. Moving further down here, 12 pass deflections, 30 catches allowed is quite high, but, you know, what can you do about it? Two forced fumbles with a fumble recovery. No touchdowns or anything, but that's solid numbers, no doubt. That's probably also the best we're going to get in terms of most realistic. And that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty interesting to try and take a look at what Madden would predict these guys to achieve next year. Obviously, it would be most interesting to see how these guys get rated on Madden 17. And as soon as they reveal those rookie ratings and everything like that, you can be sure I'll be covering that on this channel. Oh my god, play! Hey, you made it to the end of the video! If you haven't seen the previous video yet, you can do that by clicking here. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, you can do that by clicking here and subscribing. New videos every Friday and Sunday, and sometimes Wednesdays too.